Hey, Mark. It's Crevo, uh, Jade, and Maddie from UFM in Australia. How are you? I am well. How are you? Yeah, get, we're great, Dan. Hello. Good Monday. Hello. Hi. Um, thanks for taking the call and doing this with us. We oh, really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, happy to do it. So wait, so I've got, I've got, I've got three of you. Three of us. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. That's all right. You just uh, answer the questions as they come. You don't have to memorize their names. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Make life easier. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Sorry. All right. Uh, we're hitting record now. Uh, joining us now is Mark Sargent. He's one of the most prominent flat earthers on this. Well. Flat? Is it round? Who knows? Earth? Uh, Mark, thanks for joining us, mate. Uh, tell us, first of all, yeah. um, what led you to, I guess, have this view to begin with? Sure, sure. Well, I was teaching proprietary software out in Boulder, Colorado for a long time. And in 2014, I think I had pretty much finished the internet when it came to conspiracies. I had an opinion on just about everyone that was out there. And anyone that's into it knows about Flat Earth. We've all heard of it, and most of us hate it because it's it's so ridiculous and silly and so i said okay I, I can actually put this on my bucket list and say okay I'll, I'll look at it and decided to debunk it over a weekend and nine months later i'm banging my head on my keyboard going you know what i can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore so i made a series of videos at the beginning of 2015 called flat earth clues put them out there and said you know what internet you're more intelligent than i am as a hive mind so tell me where i'm wrong and here we are four years later with a documentary and a book and a radio show and all sorts of fun stuff so yeah that's how it happened so what does this believe we're, we're living in a dome and there's an ice wall is that correct Yes, but it's not as simple as that. So yes, we are living in sort of a, a building, a structure, a planetarium, a terrarium uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling. But the the outer boundary wouldn't be the coastline of Antarctica. So yes, the co actually, the, the coastline of Antarctica is an ice wall, not exactly like Game of Thrones. You know, it's a couple hundred feet off the water and then it slopes up to actually very, very high. Uh, most of the continent sits at around 14,000 feet. And then what we're saying is that thousands of miles inland from the Antarctic coastline, yes, would be the beginning of, if you want to call it, the snow globe wall. How's that? So what would happen if I climbed the wall? Can, can you climb it? Like, no, 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 no. Okay, so let, let's, let's say you got to the Antarctic coastline. Uh, you could climb that if you wanted to, but once you got up there, eventually, no. I mean, once you got to the outer boundaries, whatever the wall, the boundary is made out of, we don't know. Uh, high frequency, force field, heavy element, heavy water, take your pick. Unified field, I don't know, uh, but it's out there. Go ahead. How do you explain um, people that have crossed the continent of Antarctica? Because they have. I don't know. I, I believe that they think that they've crossed the continent of Antarctica. Uh, but again, remember, the GPS system was built by the United States military. It's the Department of Defense all the way. It was designed in the 1990s. And it, not only will it tell you kind of where Starbucks is next to you, if you have Starbucks where you are, but it'll also tell you where it wants you to go. And if it, you know, it, yes, I'm saying that the GPS system does lie to a capacity, but that's because it's the United States military. So you're saying that the GPS system is basically telling you that you're traveling a certain way, but actually it's a bit different and you're oh, yeah. telling you a little Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will bend you in the way that it wants you to go. I mean, it tells the truth for the most part when you're just trying to get down the street. But when you get out there, all bets are off. And, and also, you remember the GPS system has these massive dead zones out in the middle of the oceans, the South Pacific and the South Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, where you get 200 miles offshore, the GPS system doesn't work anymore. It goes into approximated mode, meaning it knows kind of where your plane is, but not exactly, which gets into the whole Malaysian thing. But anyway, sorry, I ramble. This is what I do. No, no. Um, I'm, just, I'm just got a question for you, Mark. Obviously, yeah. putting your name to such, I guess, you know, a, 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 such a divisive uh, topic such as this. I mean, right. you know, I, I, most people do believe that the, the Earth is, of course, a sphere. Mm. And um, I was wondering, how would you explain the fact that we have seasons? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean and, I, and I don't blame you. Look, once Flat Earth is in somebody's head, it follows with a, a never-ending series of questions, meaning what about this and how does this work? 
And I absolutely get that. With the seasons, okay, you're going to have to back up a little bit. Meaning, what we're saying there is everything in the sky, meaning the, the stars and the planets, those are just pretty little lights uh, up on the ceiling. And the sun and the moon are just bigger lights. And when it comes to the sun and the seasons, uh, the sun travels around us like a, a mobile above a child's crib. But at the same time, it also, and I know this dates me a little bit, also acts like a needle on a record player, meaning it doesn't take the same path every time around. So it moves towards the center and then it backs out and, and moves out towards the outside. And also the sun wouldn't be the only heating source uh, in this sort of enclosed building. Uh, the jet stream would also take into account the underwater conveyor system, the magma system. It's all part of one giant mechanism. Hmm. Um, can I ask, like, how do you explain hmm. shots from space? And Because hmm. like, the Earth looks around and all the, the planets yep. are round. Yep. You, I know, I, again, great question, which I would follow up with. Okay, so the first off, I would say yeah, it's worse than you can even imagine. What I'm saying there is that NASA has been an utter lie since minute one. Uh, Mercury and Gemini and absolutely Apollo. And I know I can say this because you guys are in another country. Don't believe yeah. any anything that the Americans say when it comes to the space program. Do not believe them. I mean, I, they did it partially because, you know, wave the flag, go team, America's the greatest, but also to keep this thing under wraps. But the question I follow up to you with is, how did you know before the Americans took that picture in 1972? How did you know it was a globe? Because it's not like NASA invented the globe in 1972. So how did, we, how, how did we know for 500 years? that it was a globe, that it was a sphere, that it was a ball. It wasn't because anyone well, knew, it was because we were told. And we were told this generation after generation until finally, you know, the space program was introduced. What, what I'm saying here, give me the short version, is that even our best and brightest, even the best scientists we had didn't know for sure until 1960. And then the United States and the Soviets figured it out. They went out to Antarctica and they went to the North Pole and they figured out the dimensions of this place. And they said, you know what? Let's just keep this thing under wraps as long as we can until we can figure out how to introduce it to the public, which looks now, like but, about... But, no, um, go ahead. That how, how did people know before this period? Right. Well, right. Basic things like when a ship with a really tall mast yep. comes in towards you you see the top of the mask first yep yep and that and i would have been right with you ten, 10 years ago because there's only two arguments you can use without the space system one is ships going off in the distance and two would be the sticks and shadows argument which most people don't know about anyway but if you want to talk about it, we can St uh, ships going over the horizon absolutely 10 years ago i would have been right there with you and then hd cam hd cameras came in with amazing zoom and so, yeah, a boat goes off in the horizon, and it is gone. It is on the other side of the curve. It's behind the curve, right? It's gone. It's on the other side it of the is. hill. You should not be able to see it. Yeah. You crank up the zoom, it's back in frame. You let it go again, crank up the zoom some more, it's back in frame again. We can see with distance, we see with digital cameras now, distances that are far, far beyond what the curvature should allow. I mean, upwards of 150 miles at sea level. It's ridiculous. And as far as like ships disappearing hull first or mast last, most of that's just from atmospheric lensing, atmospheric refraction. Basically, you're looking through. Remember, the, the stuff we're breathing right now is just a thin version of water. And it has magnif magnifying properties to it. And it will cut off the boat. Sorry, I'm so, not, sorry go ahead. I'm not with you on that one. I've, I've seen the ship thing with my own eyes. Take but, a camera. And I mean, look. Look, I mean, Crevo obviously, you know, disagrees with your view, Mark. Mm -hmm. But... You must actually cop this quite a lot. I mean, it, it, how do you deal with so much criticism? Because, I mean, as I was saying earlier, it's quite a big deal to put your name next to such a, right. a controversial claim right. in your face. Do you deal with, you know, quite, I guess, you know... In, in, in some ways, in some, 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 yes. Anonymously, yeah, you bet I do. Uh, the YouTube comment section, which I like to say, if you can't say something nice, uh, don't say anything at all. Um, that's not true. If you can't say something nice, you're probably in the YouTube comment section. But as far as uh, emails and or phone calls, 99% of them are either neutral or positive. So, and I don't mind, you know, part of my reason putting my name and my face and my address and my phone number out there is because I yeah. want it, I want it to be proven wrong. That's when I introduced this thing. I said, you know what? Shoot me down. I'd love to go back to my old life. And the exact opposite happened where I had subject matter experts, military guys and engineers and pilots, you name it. They were all coming yeah. forward and saying, you know what? You might be onto something. Go ahead. 
So what's next uh, for flat earthers such as yourself? What are, what are the next steps? Like when you say you're going to these conferences, right. are you all getting together, you know, sort of you know, saying, okay, we're going to preach this, like you go there, it, try and, you know, like a religion kind of thing? Like is... But well, what do you guys want to achieve? It's, it's kind of, what's the saying? It's kind of like organized crime. It's not that organized. We don't exactly come up with any sort of agenda. People, the, the entire community is based off of content and merit of content. Meaning, if you want to get into Flat Earth, make a channel or make a web page, generate some videos, and if they resonate with people, great, you move up the ladder. If you don't, you don't. Uh, and then it's, there's there's no real rules. People just kind of come up with with different ideas, thinking outside the box, saying, "Okay, would this experiment? How would this experiment work? And how would this experiment work?" And we've done a whole bunch all over the place, and so far it's been resonating really well. Look, um, Mark, you said before that uh, you've got a YouTube channel. Like, yeah. how many views are on your channel at the moment, just roughly? Uh, on my channel, sixteen million. I think on my channel, but that's nothing so com that. compared to the mirrors. Yeah, There's yeah, right. How many are on that? Oh, on the mirrors, probably another twenty million. Uh, and that's just my channel. I mean, and I'm not even in the top ten uh, technically of yeah. of channel subscribers. There's, I mean, we at one point. I'll, I'll give you. I know you, it's a limited show, but I got to get this out there. Which is in 2015 yeah. when you search for flat Earth in YouTube. I think we were coming in at maybe fifty thousand relevant search results. When you yeah. do when, before they just shut down the scoreboard altogether last year. We came in at 20.9 million, which was just beating out Donald Trump. And that's when they tore down the scoreboard. And they said, yeah, we don't want people to look at that anymore. So now well, we got, go ahead. You've got like 16 million views on yeah. your channel. Yeah. You've got conferences going on. Yeah. I put it to you that you're just running this as a scam to make money. <laughs> Please. I mean, it, do you really think anyone would go into Flat Earth just to make money? Uh, it is I do. It, no, I come do. on. There's, I there's, do there's anything to make money. No, no, well, no, not this. I mean, flat Earth is the worst conspiracy in the history of conspiracies. Nobody goes in it to make money. Uh, now, if there's money to be had there, hey, great, fantastic. Uh, but I'm sinking it right back into the community. If I if I make any decent money, which I haven't yet. Are you making, how much money have you made off it? Oh, not that much at all by comparison to uh, my other career. Uh, I think how can I compare it with? Uh, Australian pounds. How about British pounds? Less than twenty thousand a year British pounds. Now, I that's mean, not that's pretty side hustle. The, eh, I mean, look, it's not a hustle. Believe, I mean, I've been doing this for four years, and I've never ever backtracked. And look, it's resonating out there. The reason why it's it's resonating is because we've now created a model that is easier to explain than the globe. The flat Earth is now easier to explain than the Earth as we know it. And as you know, people take the, the path of least resistance. And so we just keep getting bigger and bigger. Quick question for you. Yeah. Um, so you know when, I guess, what, round earthers want to yeah. try and convince you that the earth is round? Sure. What's the dumbest conspiracy they've tried to sell you? Like as a believer that the, the earth is flat, if I came to you and tried to convince you with a conspiracy that the earth's round, do you have one that, you know... Makes is, you laugh every time you is hear there it? a conspiracy that I hate? Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, if you once you get into flat Earth, you really can't condemn most other conspiracies that are out there. Now, if somebody came yeah. up to me, now, yeah. So if somebody came up to me five years ago and said, "Hey, by the way, I've got proof that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby," I, I would have laughed him out of the room. Now I'd be like, "Yeah, you know what? I'll give you a couple minutes. What do you got? What are you, you going to throw at me?" Um, I don't hate any conspiracies. The the only one that doesn't dovetail into flat Earth at all, which I absolutely reject, is the secret space program by uh, Richard Hoagland, which was done some years ago. Which is like, there's millions of people living on the moon, and there's hundreds of thousands of people living on Mars, and that stuff. Because that just doesn't sync up with with the flat Earth model. But no, I I don't hate really really any conspiracies because how i'd be hypocritical to do so what i mean so what, you're, what you're saying is you're open to most conspiracy theories i'm i mean i've got my favorites but again because flat earth is so big it's such a giant umbrella uh i can't i i can't judge other people's conspiracies just at face value i can't do it anymore it would be hypocritical on my part mark tell me what's the conversation like 
one, with your wife if you're married, or two, with your friends who disagree with you? Because, I mean, I guess if, if they had, had never have been uh, exposed to that, that opinion, that's quite quite an interesting thing to just come out with. Right. Um, did, you, right. did you get a bit of pushback from your friends and family? Yeah. That, and do you still have that going on? It's very, it's, yeah, it's very, very mixed. It, it really comes down to uh, if you believe in the American space program, if you believe in the Apollo program, if you believe in that, absolutely, it's like, oh yeah, the Americans went to the moon, no doubt about it, then yeah, you're going to have a tough time with it. And, uh, and yes, family and friends, that's usually the, the sticking point for them. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you're passionate about something and you have a lot of conviction, it shows. And so yeah. there's, you know, there's not much, but yes, we, I have different, differing views with some of my friends, definitely. And definitely family members. My, my sister hates it. Uh, well, I like your passion. Well, thank you. I mean, it, <laughs> but it's, but it's genuine. I mean, it is, this is not a con. Trust me when I say this. I don't, I did not want to do flat earth. I hated flat earth and there's still days which I hate flat earth, but I can't, what I try to tell people is like, look, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Can, can I, can I give you absolute proof of flat earth right now? No, I cannot, but I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model and that we have a 99% retention rate you compare that with any other group including mainstream religions i mean once you get into this you people have tried tried to go back and i know that kind of sounds like a religion in some way kind of like scientology or something but it's not i mean we don't have a bible we don't wear robes or chant or anything you're just like very open-minded and i think that's a good quality the, well thank you people who, who come at you with the with the truth i'm sorry say it again are you cutting off people, say family or friends, who come at you with the truth? No, 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 not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I, again, I welcome it. I, I say, look, please, tr if you got something, throw it at me. So Throw it at me that I don't have a rebuttal to. Throw it at me that I, I got nothing. I mean, I haven't heard an original question probably in five months, I think. Uh, but, I, but at the same time, I, you know... I've been in when okay real quick example was when I got into this in 2015 when I put the videos out there I honestly saw thought some academic was going to call me up and say okay here's where you went wrong you forgot to carry the two you can shut down your channel now and you can go back to your old life and for it for several months I was waiting for that and it never happened and then again subject matter experts started calling me up pilots and engineers and and um uh do you believe in God then I do I do believe in God. So as, as a matter of fact, God made the earth flat, or is it? Did He make the earth, or yes. who created the flat earth? Yes, yes, yes. So, so I, it, it's, and I don't want to get into religion too much. I don't think this is a religious channel, but, yeah. but here, I mean, you, it's one of two things, and that is when you get into flat earth, it's by default because it was, you know, it's not an organic shape. Uh, that means it was built by somebody. That means there's a builder. At that point, take your pick. Is it an advanced technology that's way older and way more powerful than us? Or is it the divine? And at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. And uh, it's for me, for me, though, I was raised a born again Christian and at least half of the flat earthers, at least in the United States, are hardcore Christians. So, so do you reckon that the, that the sun's going around the earth then as well? Yes. I mean, the sun is inside this building. I mean, if we have walls and a floor and a ceiling, the sun and the moon are traveling above us. Uh, you know, the sun so would be an incandescent. The earth, is, the earth is the center of the universe. <sighs> Who says there is, there's a universe? The same guy that says said we went to the moon? Those guys? What I'm saying is you're in a building that we have no idea what's on the outside of it. There is no solar system. There is no universe and galaxy and everything around there. You're just being told that by the military. Uh, what you're seeing mm. up there, the star, you know, the sun and the, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the planets and the stars, they're just lights in the sky, no different than a planetarium. So yes, you My could, help. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, just tell me, I'm, I'm quite curious. Um, you're just saying that so many born again Christians are flat earthers. Yes. What do you think the link is there? Uh, why, why, why are so many extreme religious, extremely religious people, like why are they attracted I, to this view, do you think? I, I was surprised as well, and that was because I didn't look at the Bible as a flat earth book. 
But everybody mm. that started getting into it, you know, the, and I said this in my clues, you know, stories like a uh, perfect one would be like the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel, right? Bridge to heaven, right? Where Where is that going if the earth is spinning around at a thousand miles an hour and going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour and so on and so on? That's just a, a building that's going nowhere. It's, it's going in all sorts of different directions. But if you're in a, in a fixed stationary world, a snow globe sitting on top of somebody's desk, uh, then it's actually going up somewhere. In fact, there's only one verse, again, I know this is not a religious show, but I got to get this out which is the reason why the, the Christians have latched on is there's only one verse that even touches on the globe. And that is uh, Isaiah 40, 22, which says, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Well, in the ancient Hebrew, circle isn't globe or sphere or ball. Circle is circle. Your dinner plate is circular. Your dining room table, a hubcap, and so on. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the leap of faith for the Christian community uh, was not hard. And the other four religions, you know, there's the, uh, the five major religious houses, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. The other four jumped on it pretty quickly as well. I was, I was surprised. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Do you ahead, think then that, um, that like, as the, as you said before, that there is no universe so, right. as per se, right. do you think what we see, we're basically living in like a big Truman show? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly what I'm Hunger saying. Games. The what? That's the perfect way to describe the Hunger Games. You've seen that movie? Yep, Hunger Games also has a dome. Truman Show, the same sort of thing. Uh, right. With The only difference is the, the technology used here is extremely advanced. I mean, you remember, and that shouldn't be a stretch for, for you guys to understand. I mean, the heck, we've only had HD televisions for 20 years. And back then, it wasn't even that good. Uh, imagine what we could do in another 100 years. And imagine what you could do with unlimited resources. I mean, yeah, this world is very, very big to us. But maybe to an advanced tech or an old civilization, it's not that big. Well, hopefully, we can use that technology to um, prove that the Earth is a god. Mm, hopefully. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think you've actually, obviously, convinced Crevo. Nah, sorry. Oh, it's, it's oh, okay. I, look, I'm, I'm not Have here... I'm not here to prove it to you. I'm not even here to persuade you. All I'm here to do is, is uh, plant the seed and say, you know what? Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. I hated Flat Earth, yeah. and here I am preaching it. No, I, st hmm. I still hate it. <laughs> I, I like the, the open-mindedness uh, to it that you have. Well, thank and the you. Passion. I think what, like, if people want to believe in Flat Earth, go for it, because I think it's harmless. And hey, if it's true, it's true. If it's not, it's not. Can, Whatever you believe. Can can I get some out uh, against one of your competitors? Because I just did a radio show with uh, today with Ash and uh, Ed. Oh yeah, Ed. And yeah. A Ash was the exact. She that's a, that's the girl, right? Ash Ashley, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She was absolutely. Oh, she hated. It. She said that I'm absolutely ninety nine point nine nine percent crazy, and she just could not get around it. And it's like, really? That's kind of mean, but whatever. So thank you for being nice. No, that's okay. No worries. Well, we try and be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like your, your, what's it, um, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. There you go. Well said. I tell you what, I don't think I'd be welcome at a Flat Earthers convention uh, because I'm gay, Mark, and uh, gay. Christians and gays and Hey, flat hey, you know what? No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me chime in here. Let me, uh, Flat Earth, Flat Earth does not care, officially, of course, Flat Earth does not care about race or gender or sexual preference or religious preference it certainly doesn't care about age no are you kidding you'd absolutely be welcome i mean yes of course there's christians that that might have a, a different view but at the same time they'd welcome you into the community because the community is bigger than that yeah well I, again like i guess i won't be sitting at the uh the that, that's table, all right. But... That's right. By the way, we're, we're, the next the next conference, by the way, is in uh, Auckland in uh, three weeks. I, I'm I'm going to. Yeah, it. I'm cool. I'm speaking at it. You'll be flying around the world to there then. There you go. Yes, flying across the plane, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Mark. We really do appreciate it. Oh, and thank you. Regardless of your views, um, it is what it is, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. And thank you very much. Yeah. We really appreciate it. No, your time. no, no. Hap happy to do it. And uh, if you ever need me for anything else, give me a call. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. We do appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thanks, brother. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.